I want to show you the data, the survival data, on the, what's called the first study, which is a study of fulvestrant 500, a pure anti-estrogen versus an astrazole, an aromatase inhibitor, which is the current standard of care in the first-line advanced breast cancer setting. <coughs> These are my disclosures. I want to put it in context about this drug. This is the background to the first study. Fulvestrant was first developed at a dose of 250 milligrams. And on the left-hand side, you can see fulvestrant 250 versus the current standard again, anastrozole at the time. There were two studies. You'll see study 21, for which actually Kent Osborne was the principal investigator, and study 20, for which one of my colleagues in the UK, Tony Howell, was the principal investigator. That study was set up for superiority, but in fact it showed equivalence. And the reason we could show equivalence was because there were these two studies and you could put them together. You need more patients to show equivalence than superiority as it happens. And so the combination showed that the 250 milligrams was equivalent to the current best treatment of third generation aromatase inhibitor. On the right hand side, the drug was then used against tamoxifen, which was the first line treatment at that time. We used the word similar in this study because there were not sufficient patients. It was a single study and there was not enough power to show equivalence. So in the past, with 250, we knew it was, equiv it was equivalent to an AI. It was similar, we said, to tamoxifen as an anti-estrogen. <coughs> it was then decided that the dose of fulvestrant could be doubled, raised to 500. And this is also a background slide. This is called the confirmed study in the second line setting. Half the patients almost had received an AI, and half the patients had received tamoxifen. And what you can see in this study was that the higher dose of fulvestrant gave an improvement in time to progression. The hazard ratio was 0.8, 20% reduction in progression that was highly significant. And with that came a survival advantage with a nominal p-value of 0 0.016. I think I have to explain the importance of this in this context. Because when you look back at the aromatase inhibitors, when they became the standard of care for second-line therapy, there was four studies against the current standard at that time, which was magistral acetate. There was two studies of letrozole versus magistral acetate, and there was two studies of anastrozole. None of them showed a benefit in terms of time to progression. It was a effect, side effects that made us choose the aromatase inhibitors. So it's quite unusual to see a difference in time to progression and survival in the second line setting. And so when we saw this, we got excited about it because it's something that we hadn't really seen before in this sort of context. The first study was then looking at the 500 dose in the first line setting. It's a phase two trial, which means it's slightly smaller, as you know, and it's open label. But patients were randomized to either fulvestrant 500 or to an astrazole, one milligram. And you can see there the follow-up is shown on the slide. The primary endpoint of the study was what we call clinical benefit rate. The number of patients whose disease was controlled at the end of the first six months of treatment. And you can see here that there's a numerical advantage in favor of fulvestrant 500, 72.5, versus an astrazole, 67% of women. Hazard ratio is 1.3, in other words, 30% more people had stabilization of their disease, but that was not significant, statistically significant. But it showed that the two drugs were equivalent for this primary endpoint. The secondary endpoint was time to progression. And what this showed, and we previously reported this, was that the new drug, Fulvestrant 500, gave significantly longer duration of control of the cancer on treatment. And down the bottom, you can see the median time to progression for an astrazole was 13 months, and for fulvestrant 500, it was almost double that, at 23.4 months. Now, I'll just comment that the 13.4 months for the control arm is in keeping with all the previous studies for AI as a first-line treatment. So what we're seeing is an additional control period on the fulvestrant 500. And that was highly significant, 
you can see the hazard ratio there is 0.66. I'd ask you to keep that in mind for a second. 0.66, a 34% reduction in progression. The survival data that we're going to show you today was not a defined endpoint in the original protocol. It was added following a protocol amendment in February 2011. And it was planned to an analyse the data only once when at least 65% of patients had died. And as you can see down the bottom, the analysis occurred when it was 67. So it met its uh, amendment criteria. This is the overall survival analysis. You can see at the top that 23 patients, 22.5% of them, were still alive in full vestrant, compared to half of that in the anastrozole arm, 10 patients and 9.7%. No patient was unknown or lost to follow-up. There were, however, <coughs> some patients who didn't participate beyond the original trial in the extended survival follow-up. And you can see down the bottom those two reasons for that. Some individual patients said they didn't want to participate, and some sites said that they no longer wanted to get the additional information. Those patients are included in the survival analysis up to the point of their last follow-up, but not in the extended survival follow-up. All patients are included in the survival analysis. And here is the survival curve. And you can see that the patients who received the full vestment 500 dose survived significantly longer than the patients who received the anastrozole 1 milligram. And the hazard ratio is very similar to the TTP at 0.70. 30% less deaths than the patients who received full vestment 500 over the study period. And down the bottom, you can see the median overall survivals, 48.4% for anastrozole. Again, very much in keeping with previous studies in terms of overall survival for an AI. But for the full vestment 500, they had an increased survival of 5.7 months up to 54.1%, and that is significantly different. And to put that in context in terms of the additional benefits we're seeing, when I first started uh, doing uh, treatment of breast cancer 30 years ago, the average survival was 24 months. In this study, we're now at 54 months. We've seen increasing step-by-step -step improvements, and this is a further step, I believe, in the uh, overall survival benefit that endocrine therapy can bring. The survival benefit appeared to be consistent upon, across all these predefined subgroups, irrespective of age, hormone receptor status, site of disease, prior treatments. So all the various subgroups of patients appeared to benefit. There were no new safety features. These drugs have been given over many years, and this, the, follow -up, the extended follow-up of this study did not show any new safety concerns. So in conclusion, the median overall survival for Fulvestrant 500 in this setting is 54.1 months. It is statistically significantly better than anastrozole, the difference being 5.7 months. It was consistent across all the predefined subgroups. No new safety findings. And there's now, this is now the second randomized controlled trial where Fulvestrant 500 has shown a time to progression, and then now a survival advantage over the control arm. I showed you the confirmed data, which was a phase three trial in the second line setting, and now the first study, which is a phase two trial against anastrozole in the first line setting. <coughs> I don't know any other endocrine therapy where you can say that we've seen a TTP and a survival benefit in both the second and the first line setting. And so this, I think, is a new and exciting finding for women with endocrine therapy. Uh, who have got advanced breast cancer. Thank you very much. My acknowledgements. Thanks, John.